This is Harry Judd for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and with the one and only Kieran Conway. How are we, sir? I'm all good, all good. Training's been uh, picked up a little bit, so um, I'm nice and tired at the minute. Just uh, in between sessions now, actually, I've got, uh, what's the time? Two o'clock, one o'clock? So uh, in about an hour or two, I'm back, back in the gym. You've been out since October, a great unanimous win against JJ Metcalf, a fight which was tough in the later rounds, don't get me wrong, but you've taken some time off to have some much-needed hand therapy. So how did that go? Yeah, um, I've needed it for a few years. I've, I've been dealing with some just in, injuries for a few years, just been getting by. Um, nothing major. Um, just kind of things that boxers get. And now I'm back, I'm punching, and I'm ready to get, get going again because it's been too long. I miss it too much. How much has it been limiting you, obviously, in your because you've had it for a long while now, in terms of your previous fights? When did it come about that you started getting some pain and some, some discomfort? To be honest, probably my whole boxing career, even when I was younger, even when I was in the amateurs and stuff, I had um, just ha painful hands all the time. But we're not made to be punching with, with our hands, and um, my hands definitely weren't made for it. They were probably made for something a little bit more, um, I don't know. I don't know what word. I don't know, maybe barbering or something like that. <laughs> something where I'm not using my hands. <laughs> your 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 first job, um, what did you was it um something to do with shoes or something you used to do? Cobblers. Yeah, I was a shoemaker. Um I weren't very good at it. <laughs> I just did a little one little job of hundreds um in a hand make. So the shoes were actually like they're very famous in Northampton. Um and that's what Northampton's famous for, isn't it? Be, being cobblers. And uh yeah, I just had one of hundreds of jobs. And I went, I was I just got by. Should have stuck well, perhaps you should have maybe stuck a little bit more time do, doing the shoes to give your hands a little bit. But you could always go back to it, I guess. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> You've got two fights in the space of six weeks. You're out in Sheffield um on August 6th, then you're out on the undercar of Canelo and Triple G on September the 17th. You're certainly making up for lost time, Kieran. Yeah, yeah, I don't like hanging about. I don't like wasting time. This whole this last year has been really frustrating for me. I've been staying training. I've done everything that I possibly can. I've stayed doing my my strength work, my conditioning work, my, my running. Um, I've been doing as much sort of boxing as I can. Um, a lot of shadow boxing and agility work. Just been and studying the game. Um, but it's been really frustrating with no fights. And now I'm so happy that I've got two lined up, and I want to get them done. I want to win both of those and go get another one by the end of the year as well. I don't like hanging around. Have you got an opponent for the Sheffield card? Do you know? No, anything? actually, today my opponent that I had locked in pulled out. So we're just getting another one in. Um, not sure yet. I've had no names sent to me, but it is what it is. Whoever it is, it's just it's another job. The same as the Vegas one. It's just another job. I'm going there to do the same same thing, and that's win. You're fighting for the vacant WBA international middleweight title against Austin Williams, who had a great performance last out against Ch uh, Jordan Brooker. Um, you've got a lot of praise from fans about taking that fight. It's a massive, massive stage. Yeah, it's a massive stage. Um, and it's one that I've always said that I was going to be part of, like the Texas Canelo card as well. Always said I was going to be on big cards. Uh from early days, I used to, I told everyone, even when I was in the amateur, I used to tell my teachers, my, my friends, everyone. I told them and uh, always believed it, no matter if they didn't. And um, yeah, now I'm getting them. I'm getting them opportunities. And now I need to make up for uh, lost time um, and the loss that I got in Texas by putting on really good performance, showing what I'm about to the whole world and then bouncing my career in the right direction. It was obviously quite a long time after after that night in, in Dallas. Uh, a magnificent spectacle. Um, I spoke to, I know some of your team quite well. Can you tell me about some of the stories that you had out there? <sighs> Where do you begin with that one? That one was a stressful time in my life. Um, getting out there, for example, one day before the weigh-in. That wasn't ideal at all. 
in so many ways. Before the fight, I was actually splashing water over, cold water over my face in the dressing room to try and like, wake up a little bit. I was, it just weren't right. I pro- in the, in hindsight, in other people's opinions, when it got that late, I probably shouldn't have went. But for me, there was nothing going to stop me because I still believed I could win. So, and it was such a big stage as well. So I was like, why am I not going to go? They even got a Suzuko, another opponent and everything on fight week. I was like, I found out and I started kicking off. I was like, why, why they got an opponent? I'm still going. At this point, I didn't even have a visa. Um, so yeah, I had I had problems with the visa. Nothing to do with like me. There was just an error on the system. It didn't allow my uh, visa to get passed through on, on the system in time. So yeah, it took me right up to the day before the weigh-in. And um, there was also other things like I pulled my hamstring three weeks before. So it stopped me training properly. Um, and yeah, it just caused a lot of stress. There were, it was a whole the whole thing was a stressful period because I wasn't supposed to be fighting Suzuka. I was supposed to be fighting Jesse Vargas. Um, that that's what the initial thing was about. Um, so then he he started dragging it on, and then I had a feeling he was going to pull out, and he did. I found that out over Twitter, um, before anywhere else. And then um, yeah, there was just the whole thing. Am I going to be going? Am I not? And it was just going on for a while. Then Suzuka was there. Um, a fight that I already took in December, mm. a bit, uh, the year before, on the AJ versus Pulev card. But he pulled out for his own reasons. Um, so we got that one. But it was so stressful. And, uh, yeah, just probably about 20% of me turned up that night. So I didn't do myself justice. So that's what I mean by it. I'm going to make up for that in this fight in uh, Las Vegas. Um, and I really do want to make a big impact in my career. You've mentioned in previous interviews and also previous podcasts about your strength of character. You are someone that takes, uh, that wants to be in the big fights and takes the fights on short notice. For example, the Ted Cheeseman British title, one that was very early on in, in, in your career. And obviously the Sissoko fight, which obviously was was last minute, etc. You're meant to be fighting Jesse Vargas. How much has those two fights in particular helped with character building for you? I don't know. Maybe that was my character all along. Like, I, I never was going to say no to those fights. I always was going to take them fights. I always believed I was going to win those fights as well. Um, like I believe I'm going to win in Vegas. I don't see why I shouldn't take the fights that I think I'll win. Uh, I think it's just a no-brainer. Um, and like I didn't come from Olympic background, so I've not got the pleasure of. Uh, th- this big hype and promotion and then getting easy fights uh, making out that they're hard fights I have to take the hard fights and I'm not bothered with that mm. Like I'm I'm a real fighter, I'll take the hard fights I want them I've never once asked for an easy fight so maybe that's just been my character all along What, my, what do you know about Austin Williams your, your opponent out there? I've, ever since that, that fight's been mentioned I've watched Hours and hours and hours of him. And I'll keep watching hours and hours of him. I know that he's loud, outgoing, outspoken, and he wears his heart on his sleeve. I think everything about him is going to play straight into my hands. I honestly do. I don't see... So I'm a big visualiser. I visualise and visualise and visualise. And there's not one possible outcome. There's not one possible way I believe that he can beat me. I've even tried to force myself to see it. I don't believe in his hype. I believe in myself. He he might have a dig on him, but it's not like I've not been hit hard in the past. And I've been sparring with heavyweights. Mm. My, because I walk around so big, I have to spar with big people. I spar with every size that you can imagine. So I'm in with fast people, heavy hitters. It doesn't matter. Um, but also, you've got to land. If you've got a big punch, you've got to land. You've got to land clean as well to hurt someone. I'm not his last opponent. His opponents have all been there to get beat. I don't think any of them believed in themselves. They just believed his hype. They let his character uh, bully him, bully, the, bully them in the ring and before the ring. And I'm not going to let that happen. I'm here to do a number. 
is the Jesse Vag- Vargas fight a fight that can be remade in the future? Would you still want that fight? I don't think it could be because I'm not going to go down to super welterweight. Not a chance. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think he could go to middleweight. I don't think he should be at super welterweight. So, yeah, I don't think so. I w- obviously, I would, but I don't think it could happen. You're in such an appealing division um, and you want to make the big statements. Um, what fights do you want in that division that are out there? All the big fights. I'm, I'm not here picking and choosing names because I'm not bothered. Like uh, I've always just took it as it comes. And uh, I'm really not bothered. I just want the biggest fights that I possibly can get and give it my all into this sport. Uh, I'll just continue to keep giving it all and whatever opportunities come up, I'll be there.